So yeah, so um, hi. So today uh, I want to show you uh, this new kind of framework, uh, web framework. Uh, that is, I think that is quite amazing. So, but first of all, uh, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Ruby Jane Cabagnot or Cabanu for French. Bonjour. Um, yeah, I'm currently working and living now in the cold country, also Norway, but originally from the sunny Philippines. Um, so yeah, uh, anyway, uh, I want to talk about Quick, so which I think is the next generation of uh, front end uh, framework um, and why it is applicable quick and it has something to do with this thing called resumability so um, what is quick um, so in a nutshell um, it is a new kind of um, JavaScript uh, or a next gen, next gen web application framework that makes it possible for um, the web apps or your, of any size or complexity to load instantly and run the same way um, at any scale. Well, it sounds good to be true, right? But uh, yeah, but, but before we can appreciate uh, Quick, we need to know first uh, what is a problem or issue that uh, the Quick creators are trying to solve or enhance the reason it came to be. And yeah, for this session, uh, let's talk about, here's our agenda. So we'll have an overview of our current different patterns, um, the challenges of current frameworks that we are facing today, and why Quick was developed. And yeah, like what I said, essentially, uh, what is the problem the creators of this framework um, want to solve? And then let's, uh, or in other words, the concept of resumability in the next generation of um, framework in an OO of one loading time. And then let's have a quick demo on how to get started the quick and to see this action of the mobility and lazy loading in action. So yeah, so we have these different di readings, re uh, rendering strategies. So there are now, like I say, millions of um, frameworks out there, or oh, exaggerating, of course. Uh, but there are at least a dozen or so uh, um, different patterns that or architectures that we need to understand when we are building uh, our web application. So whether it be in the, from the server or the client or all at once um, or partially because um, each one has its own um, different trade off, trade off in terms of uh, user experience or developer experience as well as the... Uh, so yeah, let's take a look at them along with the frameworks that support them. So first we have this static website. So this is the most original or the original and the most basic rendering patterns. Uh, so the web pages are put together in advance and uploaded a static file in the cloud storage. So basically it's not great for websites where data changes often or sites that is uh, quite require a lot of interactivity. The example frameworks that uses them are like Yugo, 11T and Jekyll. And then we have the SPA, or the single page apps. So around 2010, we saw the rise of SPAs, like the AngularJS, and then later on the React, a few years later. So in the SPA paradigm, all the you and I rendering pad uh, paradigms or happens in the, in the browser. So you start with the one HTML page, and then as a shell, and then execute the JS or JavaScript to render the UI and then fetch the required um, data with additional HTTP requests. But even though it is a SPA, it can still have multiple routes um, because uh, the routes, uh, uh, we don't point at, the routes don't point to a server, but they're just updated in the, in the, by the JS in the browser. And for the end user, it may seem that there is an instantaneous rendering of the site, but uh, some drawbacks of it is, uh, the, of the spas include a large JS bundle, uh, which can make the initial page load pretty heavy uh, or pretty slow. And another thing for spa is that it is not great for if you need SEO. And then we have the MPAs or multi-page apps. So basically this one is HTML and data are 
put together dyna dynamically on a server whenever a browser requests. So any data change or tra data transfer to the server leads a new page uh, being displayed in the browser. So an example of this, like Amazon, eBay, and many other, uh, like think of big online shops being used by this. So example frameworks will be Ruby and Rails, Django, Laravel, and CMS like WordPress. And then we have the SSR. So a few years later, like I said, this is a new work, uh, type of framework came to be. Something that could render HTML and data on the server or the initial page load and hydrate to the client side JavaScript afterwards. So basically the general idea of this is the initial request goes to a server and then renders everything dynamically. Then after uh, the initial page load, the JavaScript takes over and that's to give you the spa-like experience. And then we have this island architecture also being, this is uh, being used by Astro. I am not sure if you're familiar with Astro, but so basically with island architecture, you start with H uh, static HTML and then use only the JavaScript to hydrate interactive components. For pages that are not interactive, so know that JavaScript is shipped to the client side or the browser. So even if you build the UI in the JavaScript framework. Um, yeah. So yeah, here's the thing. Um, for like what is the JavaScript framework of today, popular frameworks like React, um, Angular, Svelte, uh, they employ this, this thing called hydration principle. So they all need this, uh, this is all need, they needed to become, to make the application interactive. And the thing is, this hydration thing is, can be quite costly, especially if you have large application. So this is the problem now with our JavaScript uh, frameworks, uh, especially now that uh, we have this, this modern frameworks uh, application that we, it has become so big right now. And as our site grows, uh, it keeps getting quite complicated. So it, we, add, we add more code. And this is a trend now. So, but adding more JavaScript code uh, down the, our application uh, leads to uh, a terrible user experience because, uh, especially if you have lower end devices and slower networks. So, yeah. So, if you notice, um, the problem or the issue here is that the hydration process. So. What if there's a way to do away with this hydration uh, altogether? So this is where the rich mobility comes into the picture with Quick. So basically, the word rich mobility was coined by this creator, uh, Quick. Uh, it's a new rendering uh, paradigm. That uh, The approach here is that the website and all of this data or application state App, the framework code, the fra framework state, and even the JavaScript listeners or event listeners are serialized into HTML, and then the actual uh, JavaScript code br is broken down to tiny pieces of chunks. I'll show that later, and then I will show. Uh, and then this means that the initial page load is always static HTML, so there's no hydration needed, and the JavaScript. Uh, yeah, the JavaScript needed for interactivity is just lazy loaded in the background using the service workers. So this is uh, what is quite quick trying to solve. So the basic goal of quick is to focus on the time to interactive metric by uh, basically delaying the JavaScript as much as possible <laughs> to take advantage of the browser's lazy loading capabilities. So this is in contrast with the uh, existing frameworks, uh, like the JavaScript frameworks right now, because it re they require a lot, a lot of code to be downloaded and executed before the page can become interactive. So, just to recap, this what is Quick doing? So we have, uh, they don't use hydration, so in instead it uses rich mobility, uh, so the, the page can become interactive without downloading and executing the JavaScript on the client. Because um, the JavaScript is not executed on the page load. The page boot up is basically um, instant or fast. 
So, yeah. And, yeah, so this is the image of our resumability versus the hydration. So basically, uh, since Quick serializes everything into HTML, both the framework state, uh, the application state, uh, and the event listeners or the JavaScript listeners, it can essentially resume execution instantaneously where exactly where the server left off. So this is in contrast with uh, other SSR or SSG frameworks. Uh, so there's no need to replay all, um, all of the application's logic and download a bunch of JS or JavaScript. So yeah, so if you have a, at least you have, I'm sure, or I'm sorry, if you have, you have a better understanding of how Quick works, so let's, let's see how, how let's getting, uh, do the getting started. So at first, this is how you do it. Uh, yeah, so choose a package manager. Uh, you prefer, uh, we can do NPM, PNPM, or RUN. And then the CLI will guide you through the inter interactive menu uh, to set the project name and then select one of the starters. And then, yeah. Oh, yeah. So before we show some demo, I'd just like to point out some, uh, some terminology that we'll be encountering later on. So like this one, dollar sign. So this one is dollar sign. So basically, the, you'll see that later. So the, the basically, the quick splits up your application into many small pieces we call symbols. And a component can be broken down into many symbols. So a symbol is smaller than a component. And this is a, a screenshot of that. So how does quick do it? So if you notice here, the, sign, the dollar sign, uh, this is dollar sign here, there in the component, and then this one also. Um, so whenever you see, with me, so whenever you see a dollar sign in your function or your event listeners, that should tell you that this function or this component are, uh, is being lazy loaded. Um, so Quick has this thing called Quick Optimizer that will run, um, will run in the build. Uh, so whenever you be building a quick application, it will search all the dollar signs uh, to, to create a separate files for each function or component or event listeners in the it that it will find. And then the quick loader. So this quick loader is basically, it, it uh, registers global events in your application. So, and then there is an event occurs it will search all the DOM, pointing to the URL that we should be lazy loaded. And then we have a key URL, which is a particular form of uh, key URL that uh, Quick is using to lazy load your content. So anyway, I'll just show some demo. <laughs> okay, hold on. Oh, it's not showing. Is it mirroring? Hey, hold on. Yeah, it's too big. <coughs> so I have here. I have your basic, I'm running a, a mic. Is it okay if I don't use mic? Huh? Huh? Yeah, please. No. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, 
Hello. <laughs> yeah, hello. Yeah. I'm already a very running application here. It's just a simple um, uh, application. So, okay, I'm going to show you. Uh, uh, as you can see, in the initial load, there's no JavaScript here. Uh, sorry. Not work. Clear, yeah. Uh, too big. Anyway, so I have here the Quick City Edition mobile app. So, um, yeah, basically, uh, I'm going to show you. Upon. Um, the first load, you, you, you cannot see any JavaScript being loaded here, being loaded here, right? So, um, <coughs> on the initial page load, there's no JavaScript being loaded. Uh, but when I click the alert, okay, where is it? Wait, hold on. What's wrong with this? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's wrong. There. Uh, read my refresh there. Okay, there's an uh, initial page load. We start with this one. Uh, so this one, this uh, this two, uh, this piece of code. These are for this is uh, for the vit. So vit is being used in the um, just in the development mode. So you don't see that in the production mode. Actually, when you put vit here and then invert, it's gone. So there's no initial page load. There's no uh, JavaScript being loaded. But say, and then I go here. Still, there's no JavaScript being loaded here, right? And then when I when I click on the alert button, alert button. Here's the alert button, and then you see here. If you notice, only the alert button or this one, this particular console log is being downloaded, right? No other else. Um, it's just this one, the alert, just the alert button. And what's amazing about this, if you look at the code, let's go back to the, oh, sorry. Here. What's amazing about here? This is the this is just this is the counter for that. I mean the component for that. Um, the counter button. The counter component alert. This is the the alert. And only and it's only the alert button was being downloaded. And it's, when you wrote right in this, there's there's two buttons here. Like there's one this uh, uh, the increment button. It's not even downloaded also. It's just this one, the alert button. And what's amazing about this is when you write this one, as a, you as a developer, you, when you write this one, it's just in one single file. And yet when you, the initial page, page load, it is just the, this one, the alert button. You don't need to download the, for example, the, the other button, the increment, because at this point you don't need it. Okay, let me refresh this one. And when I do this, okay, for the increment or button, so this one is being downloaded now, and including the the framework code, because at this time, at this point, it already needs the 
the, the framework code for the UI update. So, so um, the point here is the, jo uh, the quick only downloads the JavaScript on demand when, when, it, when it is needed. Um, yeah, so what else? Uh, for example, here in Todo also. And the reason for this, um, if you look at here, how is how is quick how is uh, quick doing this? Um, they have this thing, this uh, QRL in the in the button. Uh, for example, in the alert, is being serialized. All application state of. Uh, The thing is, Quick is, is able to, up to serialize everything, everything, the application code, the framework code of, the, of your application. So, and when you do, for example, uh, there's another, let me show another dem demo for the to-dos. For example, But to do also, for example, when I click on this, uh, when I type something, see? This is the only time that the quick will download uh, this year JavaScript, when it's, ne which is being, uh, uh, being, uh, being used. And then another one, another one, um, also this one for the, I have this, when you scroll down here, for example, this one, this, uh, this, uh, this component, when you do this, there's no JavaScript yet, yet. and then the moment, let's see, this clock, the moment it, it comes into visible or it, 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 it becomes visible in the UI, that's when the JavaScript will download this, uh, this piece of code. So, yeah, basically, uh, what else can I show here? So, Let me go back to the. Yeah, I'm done with that. So, so basically, so uh, quick is the uh, see is this um, is the reachability framework, and then they have this quick city for the routing or the meta framework. Uh, the build around quick. So it has directory based routing, nested layouts, nested uh, file based menus, and data endpoints. So basically, uh, the quick city is to what is quick, uh, and then what or what Next.js is to React, and then what's Next is to view or Svelte kit to Svelte. And then to, yeah, so to recap, so. Um, Various rendering patterns, basically, that use hydration to enable interactivity. So the, the app runs twice, but the, the DX is good, or developer experience is good, but interactivity is less performant. But with Quick and its reachability, there's no hydration, so which means uh, performance scales well. Um, it has a zero of one notation. The developer experience is good and very performant. Um, quick is service side rendered by default, so SSR w works out of the box. Um, it is resumable. Um, 
Quick's SSR is, works differently than other existing frameworks. So there's no repetition of HTTP requests that you've done on the initial server to render the application. So the time to interactive is pretty fast also. So basically, Quick is give us this fine grain, uh, lazy, loading, lazy loading mechanism. So unlike in either uh, previous generation of frameworks, what we had, um, it will the it will automatically split up your application into smallest chunks of JavaScript possible. So, yeah. So in my opinion, um, the new mental model of uh, Quick introduced with us with this assumability is will be the next thing in the um, framework space. So, the uh, well, Quick is superficially similar to React. If you can see, if you can. Uh, um, I can show you. If you're familiar with React syntax, actually you can do quick. So basically, the if it's API and the, the use of JSX and but under the hood, actually it's it's quite it's quite different. Um, so last uh, last month, it has uh, it announced its release candidate. So so it means that the quick and the quick city are ready for production. So this means the API feature is already complete, and there's no more plans to add or change more or more no, more APIs or features before the version one. So yeah, so yeah, I'm a bit fast. So but if you have questions, uh, yeah, I like what I said. It's a big mental uh, shift from the where things are, and but I think it's quite ex uh, pretty exciting now in the frame front end framework. Uh, so it's something to look out for, especially as they develop more the um, the quick uh, or the quick uh, framework. So 